Today we're going to be building an eight inch block corner lead. This is probably the most common type of corner you'd be building out in the field. This is the way your stocked area should look. There's enough block to complete the corner and enough mortar in the mortar pan to build the corner. Also mixed in with the block, there should be at least seven corner block for the outside corner. The reason why it's stocked this way and not in a straight line is because once we lay out the very first course, for the rest of the construction, we're going to make pretend that we're working on scaffolding, meaning we're not gonna have the ability to walk around the corner to the outside. This adds a degree of difficulty to the construction process. For the first step of the construction process, we're gonna be using our framing square and pencil to draw an outside corner a comfortable distance away from our stocked area. A quick way that we can do this is to simply measure about four feet from the corner of our mortar pan at about a 45 degree angle and put a mark on the floor. That'll be our outside corner. That's gonna put us at a comfortable distance, also very similar to the amount of room that we have on scaffolding when we're working. Now we just sort of need to eyeball where this corner is going to go and we can draw our outside corner. Just go the length of the framing square both ways. We're going to extend these lines in the next step. Now I'm going to use my four foot level as a straight edge and just extend these lines out the length of the level plus a little more. Now I'm going to take a block, set it to the outside of the corner, right on our line. Use that to put the end of my tape measure against. Run it out and lock it. Gonna measure 15 and 5 eighths, 16. 31 and 5 eighths, 32. And you should know by now that I'm marking head joints. We're gonna go out four block this way to 63 and 5 eighths of an inch. I'm gonna turn the block and go down the other side of the corner. Only this time we can't go in 16 inch increments. We need to start off at seven and five eighths and eight inches. Remember the first block is going to be laid very similar to this. Now we're not using the red numbers to mark our bond. We need to be on half bond. It was seven and five eighths and eight inches. Now we're going to go to 23 and five eighths, 24 inches. Thirty nine and five eighths, 40 inches. Fifty five and five eighths. Now we're ready to start laying units. We have our corner established with our bond marks to the outside of our corner line so that we can still see them after we spread mortar. When we spread, we're going to spread for the entire course both ways. Then we're going to start laying block.
we have our bed of mortar spread for the first course. Here's our first tip. I know that our first block is going to be going this way. Here's one end of the block is going to be set on mortar. Well, the other end of the block isn't going to have any mortar underneath of it. It will at the faces, but not at the end web. I'm going to spread a little bit of mortar right where that end web is going to be. That's going to help in keeping the block level as I lay it. As an apprentice, I recommend laying a sash block in the corner. Of course, with the smooth end to the outside of the corner. You can put a regular corner block here, but what this is doing is setting us up for the next course. With a sash block made like this, with a pretty wide center cross web. That's gonna help us in spreading water on our next course and setting our corner block on top of that. I recommend putting a sash block in the corner for masons just starting out. Now we're going to lay the rest of the block in our first course. Whatever way the first block is going, that's the side we're going to do first. Now we're doing this side of the corner. I need to put head joints on this block. Right here, we can use our traditional way of putting head joints on, where we smear, then go heel to toe. But well, what do we do right here? I need to get a head joint onto this part of the block. Well, we have a couple options. We can put it onto the block that we're about to lay. This block can go in the corner. We can try a somewhat advanced technique. We can smear mortar where that head joint's going to go and put some mud on our trowel. We can then flick the mortar onto the block where the head joint's going to go, and we can compress that more. Our first course is laid, now we can begin the leveling process. Whatever way this block is going, that's the way we're gonna put our level on top of the corner first. Just like when building our lead, we're trying to get the tops of the block all level and all touching the level. This part of the corner is good. Now we're gonna go this way. The tops of our block are all level. Now we're going to plumb each individual block. Just like our lead, we can put our level perpendicular to the block. Now all of our block are level and all of our block are plumb, but they're not all in line, in a nice straight line. We're gonna put our level 
on the outside of the corner and get everything nice and straight. Our first course is laid. I'm going to check the height and our bond. Right now we're about maybe a sixteenth of an inch high. That's just fine. I'm going to leave it. Our bond should be right on because we stayed with our pencil lines, our layout lines. Our bond is right on. Our layout course is complete for the corner. It's level, it's plumb, it's close to the correct height, it's at the correct bond. Understand, this is not how a building would be built. We would never start in one corner of the building and start building a corner lead. We would lay out the entire perimeter of the building first, one course. That gets everything on the same height. That gets everything nice and square. There's too much room for error if we just start building corners. If our corners aren't in line with each other, when we infill the walls, they're not going to look right. For a project, this is just fine. Now we're ready to start spreading mortar onto our second course. Here's the exact reason why I set a sash block in the corner. Sash block have this extra wide cross web that allows me to spread mortar on top of it right in line with the face shell of the block next to it. That's going to help hold up this corner block. What I'll do is I'll put a regular corner block here right now and we'll see how that can hurt us on the course above. As I set this block, I'm going to be looking down the outside corner right here. I'm going to be looking over the wall as I set the block, looking down the outside corner, trying to get this block in the right position. Now I'm going to go through the leveling and plumbing process of the second course. What I would like you to notice is this block. Sure, it's a corner block and that's acceptable. But right here, we don't have the width like we did with that sash block. This center cross web isn't quite in line with this block's face shell, which means even if I spread mortar on this cross web, this mortar isn't going to bear that much weight of the block laid on top of it. Meaning this block is going to want to have tendency to fall towards this corner, towards this side when I lay it, because there isn't going to be much mortar underneath of it. Because we're making pretend that we're working on scaffolding right now, I'm not going to walk around the outside of the corner like so and plumb up the corner. Everything is going to be done from inside the corner, meaning now I have to reach over and plumb the block.
because we have each block individually plumb, we only need to do the end. I'm gonna do this corner and this end, then this corner and the far end, then straight edge the block with our level. Typically in the field, we would use some type of wire reinforcement every 16 inches or every other course. We're not gonna use any wire in this project, but I'd like to show you a neat trick that we can do when wrapping corners with wire. This is ladder wire. These ladder parts, these rung parts, go right where the cross webs are of the block. That's gonna keep grout from catching onto the wire and then building up. All we do is lay the wire on top of the corner and we're gonna cut in a couple spots. And put a bend in the wire right where the corner is. Basically making corner wire. You can buy it, it's more expensive, but it's not needed. Now we just cut it to length. And we have one continuous piece of wire in the corner with the rungs of the ladder, we'll say, right where the cross webs are. That's a little advanced. We're not using any wire in this project. Now we're ready to spread and lay our third course. Now I know I'm still about a sixteenth of an inch high with the height of the block work. I'm going to spread a little bit thinner on this course. Again, because I laid a regular corner block here, we don't have that nice wide cross web like we did with the sash block, meaning I can't spread any mortar right here. So when I go to lay this next corner block, it's gonna have tendency to wanna fall towards this area. I have to be mindful of that as I'm laying this next block. And I'll go back to using a sash block in the corner. Our third course is set, it's level, it's plumb, and now we're at the correct height. What I forgot to check on the second course was our bond. Our bond measurement is taken from the corner and pulled to the tail end of our leaf. Now we don't need to know or memorize the exact measurements. All we need to do is simply go to the eight inch increment and subtract three eighths of an inch. and our bond is good. We're at 39 and 5 eighths. Sometimes it's even easier than figuring an eight inch increment. We can go to a red number and subtract three eighths. Remember the red numbers are at every 16 inches. Now we're ready to lay the fourth course of block. What I'm going to do is lay the fourth course and the fifth course. When I get to the sixth course, I'm gonna show you a trick on how to lay the corner blocks.
Now we're ready to lay our sixth course of block. This is where I begin to start having trouble looking over the wall and figuring out where this corner is. What I do is I hold the block in a way where I can feel this corner with my hand as I'm setting the block. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'm holding the block with my hand a little bit below the block, mostly holding it with pressure with my palm. Without, even without looking, I can feel where the corner of the block is with my fingers, with my pinky and ring finger. I can feel where the corner is and I can feel the corner of the block with the rest of my hand. I'm looking on the inside of the corner now, on the other side of the block. I can line that up with the inside face of the corner while I'm feeling the outside corner with my hand and getting that very close. Slowly setting the block. I'm still holding about 75% of the weight of the block. And I'm gonna slowly bring it down. Now I'm holding about 50%, 25%, and I can feel with my hand how flat this is. I can feel over here too how flat this is. I know this block is pretty close to where it's supposed to be without looking over the corner of the block. Our corner is completed. All the blocks are plumb, level, at the correct height, and on the correct bond. Now we're going to strike up the inside corner of the wall. Towards the end, I'm gonna show you up close exactly how the very inside corner should look. Right now we're looking at the very inside of the corner. Here is the top of the sixth course. This is the seventh course, our top course. Here's our very inside corner. We need to fill this in and make this look good. What we're gonna first use is our joiner and we're gonna fill this corner. Right now, that corner has a concave joint on it. That's not acceptable. We want that to look like a perfect 90 degree inside corner. What we're gonna use is a line block. We can use a line block or a piece of brick or a piece of concrete block. We're gonna rub this on the inside corner. That makes a nice, sharp, 90 degree inside corner. What it also does is it puts mortar into the bed joints here. That's not good. We want the bed joint of the block to look like it wraps right through that corner. We have a nice, sharp inside corner. Again, we can use a line block, a piece of brick, or a piece of concrete block to get this corner looking sharp. But then we need to clean out the corners of the bed joints to make it look like the bed joint wraps right through the inside corner.
Now we're going to strike up the outside of the corner. Now I know earlier we were making pretend that we were working on scaffold and we weren't allowed to walk onto this side of the corner. The pros know what to do when we're working on scaffold and laying block. We would strike overhand, what's called overhand. Every two courses of block work, we would strike up the outside. Since we're just learning, still learning how to strike up our projects, you can now walk to the outside of the project and strike it up. This is the first time you'll be striking an outside corner and I'll get a close-up look of exactly what that's supposed to look like. This is a close-up of the bed joint corner underneath the seventh course. There's a good amount of mortar missing from this corner. I'm gonna fill it in with our striking iron. When we fill it in, we go away from the corner with our striking iron. If we go towards the corner with our striking iron, we're gonna remove some of the mortar and chunk it out. Now we have to replace that mortar. We want the mortar going all the way out to the corner. After we float it, and polish it, this corner all the way through here should look very sharp. When we polish it, the joint should be concave both ways, going that way and going that way. Here is an extreme close-up of the corner bed joint. It should be concave going that way and concave going that way, filled all the way out to the corner. All of the block that we laid in the corner here have nice outside corners. Well, what happens if we happen to lay a block that didn't have a nice outside corner? We need to make this look good. We can use our float and mortar and we can fill in that chip, that outside corner. Still making the corner look nice and sharp. Now once this is painted, you would never know that there was a chunk taken out of that block. I'll finish polishing the rest of the outside corner. That about wraps up the video for the eight inch block corner lead. This is probably the easiest corner to build, an eight inch block corner. Once we get into different size blocks, such as four inch block or 10 inch block, 12 inch block, we start getting into different size pieces that are used in the corners. It's not just whole block like we have in the eight inch block corner. Not only that, there's different variations for each of those different sized block corners. An eight inch block corner is a great starter corner for beginning masons. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.